Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to use this shape to explain what's the difference between the softy and the polished surface. Hopefully that will help you decide which shape is better for your own design. Are you ready? Let's get started. Not everything need to have this really organic flowy design there, but if you need to have it, it's coming into handy. Let's take a look on the shape mode. The first one, first two is actually the both uh, poly surface. And with this one, you can see even though it's poly surface, I still have a line there. Now, however, on this one is with the sub D and with the sub D, you almost see like seamless there. So it depends on the design you need. Sometimes you need really hard edges and sometimes you need something like that. So I'm going to show both of them uh, the way, the same curve to build those foam and just some is, couple is built with the poly, some with the, with the sub D so you can do the comparison. So that's starting from the scratch. I have a set of the uh, line right there. It's really simple to create, but here I wanted to show you some simple things. The shape on the top that we can do is we can use the sweep two rail and you got rail one and two, you're gonna create this and that, right? So really quickly, you will get the shape right here. All right, the bottom shape is uh, already have a closed curve. So we can come into the surface tool and choose surface from planar curve. And then we'll close this. So this is a basically, if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see it's a really like hard on hard edges there. All right, now to get this a little bit smoother, you can use the curve that we have like this one the curve that we have, we need to have an opening first. And then so we can trim it here and trim it here. And then once we trim it off and then we can join them, right? One is the easiest way is actually doing the fit edges and we want to fit it for something maybe 0.5 here. And then we're going to pick up here for 0.5. So then we'll get something like this. Right. If you take a look on the render view, then it's okay, but you may see a line right there. All right. So another way that we can do, and I'm going to make a comparison by going back here, copy the one that we just did there. Another thing that you can do is that you can actually blend it. Uh, when you blend it, it will be a little bit smoother, but you need to have a gap to blend it. So first of all, we might need to trim it off right there. All right. And there. All right. So then you can use the blend command. Now to make it blend a little bit better, the curve right here might need to be a little bit bigger. It's just like the curve come out will be more graceful, right? So in this scenario, if we trim this open like here and here, and then we can kind of blend it. In the blend scenario, you will need to blend surface between here and here, and then you will get something like that. And of course you can adjust to see how well that you like them to blend. And again, you can blend in between here and here, right? So with this one, if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see that it is a little bit, I mean, it's different. It depends on how you like it, but it doesn't have that, that really obvious line there, right? And why do we need to care about this is because sometimes if your work is really important for the rendering and then having that little radius, it's just gonna make your rendering look much nicer. All right, so now next one that what we wanted to do is dealing with this sub D here. Before we do in the sub D, I would recommend you to turn this one into the, all of them, actually all of them. Let's make it sub D friendly. So you're coming into the sub D right here that you have the selection and you can selection on the very last one, last second one, you have a make curve sub D friendly. All right, and I'm going to move this one up just a little bit. The same, we're gonna blend it later, so we need to have a little bit gap there. Actually, I'm just going to move this one down. All right, and then so we can use the sweep two on the sub D, rail one, rail two, cross section here and here, and then we get something like this, right? 
And with this one, it looked already really smooth. Now, the one on the bottom, what we wanted to do is we want to make them into the surface first. So that's using the same command surface from planar curve. And how we're going to turn this into the sub D is under the sub D tool, you have this uh, quad remesh there. All right. So let's go ahead to turn them into something more manageable. So let's say 40 of them. And we want to preview. And we want to convert it to the sub D. And then you can see something like that. However, they are not too symmetrical. Right. So we want a symmetrical with the Y axis and see what we come up with. Right. So ideally, we need to have uh, something to bridge in between. Let's go ahead to click OK. So let me go ahead to delete the original surface. And that is the sub D. And I should have to make this a little bit bigger. It's easier for you to see. The key for making into the sub D is whatever you're going to bridge in between, they need to be the same number. So on this ellipse there on our age, it has a section. So right here, I'm going to find out those three faces and that has eight edges. And I simply just going to pick up the face and click on one, two, and three. And let's go ahead to delete it. The same here, one, two, and three. Let's go ahead to delete it. And then we can bridge in between. Now the bridge command is right at here to bridge mesh or sub D and you're going to pick up the entire things. That's the first loop or you can click on the loop. You just click it here, hit enter. You click on the second set and hit enter. So then you will bridge in between. Now you can bridge to have a more section if that were for you and or you can, you know, just have one section there. All right. Now, if you find out like, oh, this is a little bit kink there, you can always pick up the uh, edges. For example, uh, you can make this one a little bit smaller, for example, like this. So you don't feel like that much kinky, right? So it's up to you. Once you have done that, coming over to the side to do another side, or you can just reflect to the other side. So I'm going to click on this one. And the reflect plane is going to be here and I'm just going to flip hit enter. So you're going to see one side is a little bit darker, but that is just showing you the differences left side and right side. Anything you do on the right side, which is a lighter color will reflect to the darker color. Now the key is if we are going to look at the render view, you're going to see this is like a seamless. It's almost like which you cannot see any of the seam there. This you will still see a little bit, not that much, but I can kind of feel like there's a kink there, uh, but it's good enough. This one with the fillet, you, you definitely can see the seam. But if you are really looking for like a really flowy design, Subti is the way to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. There are a lot more tricks and tips in the membership program. Join the membership, not only you support me as a small YouTuber, but also allow me to create more video for the general public. Currently, there are more than 150 video in the membership program. So join me and hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.